What's up hackers, I'm Naham Seg, and today I want to talk about how to create your own word list. If you have been following me on Twitter for a while, you may have seen that I posted a tweet not too long ago on April 1st, as a joke obviously, telling everyone that if you tweet under my tweet, I will share my word list with you. Unfortunately that tweet backfired and got a ton of results or a ton of replies and I felt bad for posting it. And I thought to myself, okay, instead of giving out my word list, I will show you guys how I've created my word list and maybe you can start to create your own. So let's get into it and let's talk about how to make custom word lists for bug hunting and penetration testing. Before we jump into the topic of creating your own word list, there are a few things that we have to talk about. The first thing is we want to talk about what an actual word list is. A word list is a collection of words that help you enumerate a particular thing and the theme of these word lists change depending on what you're trying to accomplish. So if that thing that you're trying to accomplish is to find files and directories, then it's a different theme than a word list that is used to enumerate subdomains and DNS records. So on the topic of talking about purposes and themes, I've broken down my word list in six different categories. Some of them are combined and some of them are being dealt with separately. The first one is directories. Obviously the name gives it away. I have a word list dedicated to directory names, common word list names like dev, uh, admin, uh, API, things that I kind of have seen come up uh, based on my experience while hacking on random websites. Second one is common file names. This could be things like test.php, swagger.json. That's a separate theme than directory listing because you want to make sure that you also look for these files that you may find interesting or that may result in a particular vulnerability. Third one is based on the extension. So if I know that JSP files are have a name, that naming convention that's different than uh, an ASP file, I have them separately done, but I also have them dedicated based on the theme. For example, if you're looking for log files, the naming convention of log files are way different than actions and things that are created on a website. And an action could be an edit file or edit.php, for example, and you know comparing that to something like you know, a date, a month and a year for a backup file or a log file. So you have to keep that in mind that the context of what you're looking for, that context makes a huge difference in your directory brute forcing. Let's move on to the next one. The fourth one is these are paths that are known software that could have vulnerabilities in them. For example, Jira, Confluence, GitHub, uh, Enterprise at least and all these different third-party softwares that companies may use. And it could also be things that rely on CVEs. So if I know a particular endpoint is used by a particular software, which has had an assigned CVE, I put that endpoint into my word list and I always look for it, especially when I'm mass scanning uh, a target. And of course, the fifth one is one that I think everybody needs to know is the garbage pile. These are things that I call garbage pile because I've never came across them or I've seen them on POCs that have been published. Again, in blog posts, Twitter, I put them in there and I use them as a last resort or when I'm really desperate. And of course, this is the most important one. And this one is creating a word list specific to a target, especially if you have a target like Verizon Media, or Google, Facebook that you particularly go to all the time. You're kind of more familiar with it. You know what to expect. So you want to make sure you have data on this particular target and you're using it when performing recon or content discovery. So again, just because I've named six different themes or uh, categories for word listing, it doesn't mean that you have to do the same way. And it doesn't mean that each of these have their own files, their own file names or directories and so on. These six could be combined. They could be broken down in three different major categories. It all comes down to how much data you have and how often you're going to use them. So things like directory and common file names, those two could be combined. It doesn't hurt to have them together. Uh, you can also include the low hanging fruit like the CVEs or third party softwares that you think. You can put all those together um, and then you can create one based on extensions. Uh, so if you have common names on PHP, JSP or other extensions, keeping them separately might be helpful. So you don't have to run a word list that has PHP on a site that expects something like JSP or different languages and extensions. So you want to keep them separate and you want to have as much data as you can. And you want to make sure it's organized to a way that it makes sense for you. And it fits to the model and the way that you're hacking on particular targets during your day-to-day -day job or your bug bounty hunting. 
Okay, now that we got that out of the way, we understand what a word list is, how to organize them, how to give it a theme. Now we can talk about when do we actually use a word list and how do we know we actually need to brute force something. So I've broken down my usage of my word list into two buckets and it kind of uh, helps me understand what word list to use and where to use them. So the two most common ones for me are number one, it's when I'm in my recon and information gathering phase. For example, a new bug bounty program just opens up. I'm given the scope. It's start.site.com. I go and grab all the supplements from the particular target. Then I feed it to my scanner. And then once all the supplements are scanned, I look at screenshots and right after screenshots is where I decide what word list to use. So if I'm in an initial recon and information gathering phase, the most important thing is to do a quick scan and find the most common file and directories to so the two buckets that I mentioned early on. The second use case is to run a word list uh, in a scanner for a directory brute force on a web page or a website that shows a 404, a 403, or even a default index for Apache or IIS. Those are really good indications that something may be hidden in the background that we may not see or the site is uh, hosting something that we may not see and we can use these different word lists to find out what the purpose of this website is or even find some files that may uh, come up interesting or vulnerable. Cool, so now we talked about the theme and understanding the purpose of a word list and we also talked about different scenarios you may need to use a word list and how to source for those. But now we wanna talk about how to actually create these word lists and where did I create mine and where did I get a lot of my data? So a lot of it obviously comes from Sicklist. If you don't know what Sicklist is, I'll put a link down below into the description. Definitely check it out. We'll talk about it in a little bit. Uh, the next one is BigQuery. I have way back URL. And of course I make my, uh, my entire word list dedicated to a particular target, especially one that I hack on very regularly. So that's a different one. Um, I do those every so often, not as much as I should, but the other three are things that you can use, tools that you can use to actually gather data uh, based on current trends or particularly for that target that you're hacking on. So let's explain what these mean. So if you go down to Sicklist, uh, I will put a link down below in the description. But if you scroll down and you look at it, they have a ton of cool data. You can use these a number of different ways from looking for passwords, looking for directories, um, file names, whatever you're looking into. But the most common usage for me is going to discovery and looking at their web content. This has a lot of information. It's a little bit unorganized, but it will be enough to actually go through. If you actually look into this and go through it, it will give you enough to organize a very basic word list for your day-to-day -day usage for a quick scan. But obviously this could change. Uh, you can also look at the different content management system they have. They have Drupal, they have Cold Fusion. It gives you some of the common path. So you can actually go through these and organize them and store them onto your own box. It's going to give you a good baseline on how to get started. The most common one that I actually use is this one right here. It's called the Raft. Uh, they have different sizes. You can use the small ones if you want to do a quick scan all the way to the largest one that has the most file names. But they also have one for extensions. They have one for directories. It's a really cool place to start. It's a little bit outdated from a year ago, but still it gives you a very good place to start and uh, it's better than not having your word list to go to. So I highly recommend going through all of these, kind of clicking through and seeing what H1 shows, combining a few, uh, organizing them to a way that it makes sense to you. And also keep in mind, some of these are uh, created to be in particular languages and some are created for particular content management system, backends and so on. So you have to make sure if you're going through these, you have a good solid understanding of what each of them do and you combine them and condense them into smaller groups. The second source I recently started using is BigQuery. You may have heard of this one if you have followed some of Shubza's repositories like CommonSpeak, where he actually used Google BigQuery to pull some data based on extensions. Tom Num Num also just tweeted a very cool tip. He talked about how to pull file names for log files, which is kind of interesting, especially if you're looking for those kinds of information across an entire organization. So the way that it works is it pulls the file names based on how many times I've shown up on GitHub using the BigQuery public data from GitHub and it tells you all the top 100. Similar to that, you can also create a query that gives you the top files that end in JSP, PHP, JSON, 
or whatever other file format you're looking for. You can actually download the CSV file or you can push it to your Google Drive and then you can use a command like cut to cut through the entire file and process it to just to get those path and file names out of the entire file. Another way that I create word lists is using Wayback URLs. This is not so much to actually get a ton of data or valid data based on my target, but it's to understand how do they name things, how do they name the API endpoints, where do they store them, and that sort of information. So you can actually do this by going into your terminal, typing in the target name, feeding it into Wayback URL, telling it to cut everything after the first slash, and then only giving you the fourth and fifth appearance, and also taking out uh, anything before and after the parameter. So we don't wanna see the parameter names, we just wanna purely see a folder and file name for api.airbnb.com. And this will give out a list of everything. Uh, it's not the most efficient way to get a complete list, but it gives you at least an idea of how do they name them, where do they store them, how does the API work, and, and more, most importantly, what endpoints have been always publicly accessible. Again, this exact thing works with other tools. It's not just Wayback URL. You can actually use Burp Suite for the same purpose. Go to your sitemap, right click, copy all the uh, endpoints or files that it's found, process them through Bash, and only get the file and folder names from that particular site. So again, there's a ton of tools that you may be using day to day that's giving you good data, but you just may not be using them properly to generate a word list or to use it as a part of your recon. So that's it. That's how I created my word list. Again, I've been doing this for a few years, so the data that I have is way different than what you may have right off the start, but it's always, always, always a good idea to keep historic data and to keep building on top of it as you go. So I know it's, it could be hard and scary to start from scratch, but believe me, the more you create it custom to you, the more it makes sense. It works better with your hacking style and it also helps you create good word list for you and only you. Again, don't be afraid to store random endpoints you see in blog posts, tweets, on GitHub. It may pay off some way. Uh, it may not be tomorrow, but at some point it may work out and actually give you a information or a possible vulnerability. And as always, if you like talking about recon, you wanna come watch me do some live recon, Every Sunday I go live on Twitch. You can go to twitch.tv slash uh, Every Sunday, Tuesday, and Friday and Saturday I go live. Different topics on different days, but we get to interact live and chat. If you don't like watching Twitch streams and you wanna to talk to me and ask me questions and talk to other hackers that are looking to learn about bug bounties and to get started in hacking, come check me out on Discord. Other than that, Thank you so much for watching, uh, listening to me ramble about how to create your own word list. I hope you found this useful. If you can think of other tools, other GitHub repos, other places to collect a good word list, drop them down below in the comment section. I would love to hear from you guys and to understand where you get your word list or also what other places you have used as a good source or resource for bug hunting. Again, thank you so much for watching. Peace.